early in my life, uh, one of my mentors, a man named Jim Rohn, said, Tony, all you have to focus on in your life is find a way to add more value than anybody else does, and you'll never have to worry about anything. Be the person that does more for others, and life will just be any thing you want out of it, really is what it is. And so, and he also said the way to do that is every day work harder on yourself than anything else. Because if you become more intelligent, more valuable, more skilled, you can add more value to other people. I, I remember at a period of my life I was going to work, and I was working on a job that I hated. And at the same time, I was praying that I wouldn't get fired. I was praying that I wasn't laid off. I was miserable. Nobody was holding a gun to my head, but I showed up every day and I used a flimsy excuse. Well, I got to pay the bills. I've got a car payment I have to pay. I have a family. I have children. I have a, a car note and I have a mortgage note I have to pay. Myself and my business people say, how do you get up and speak? And you have no notes and you go for three days and nights and the room is like, everybody's wired and it's incredible. It's like a rock concert. How do you do that? How do you have that confidence? Oh, and you know, it's not confidence, it's experience now. But I did so much behind the scenes and I still do to make things right. E.T., if there's one mistake you've made, what's that one mistake you made? I just want to be honest with you. My values are not in alignment with my dreams. He said, E.T., what, what do you mean by that? I said, I want to tell you a story. I got a good friend of mine, who, you know, a good friend of mine. He came to me and said, Eric, my marriage is not where my marriage needs to be. I need to make some adjustments. I see you and your wife. I see how much time you spend with your wife, how much time you spend with your children. And I just, I want that. You buy your wife roses regularly. You're always taking her out to eat. Like, E, I'm watching you. You'd spoil her. E.T., what, I just, what can I do? And so I told him what to do. And guess what he started doing, God? He started doing the exact same thing I started doing. And he said, Eric, it's not working. Like, I'm doing exactly what you're doing, but it's not working. I said, he said, why isn't it working? I said, you know why it's not working? Because your values and your dream, you say, you say you want a better marriage. But I told you, you need to iron your wife's clothes. You know what he told me? After a while, he said, I'm going to be honest with you, Eric. You, I know, you told me to iron, you told me to wash, you told me to cook. But where I come from, he said, I'm going to be honest, Eric. When I do that, I feel like a punk. And I said, that's why you're having a hard time doing it. Because your value system says a man is not supposed to iron. A man is not supposed to cook. A man is not supposed to wash dishes. That's what your value system says. So you're doing one thing, but you're going against your own value system. The reason why I'm having such an easy time washing clothes and cooking and ironing. You know why? Because nothing is as important to me as my marriage. And I would rather be happy. I would rather be happy than to say I ain't no punk. Let Make me a punk. I want to be a punk. A happy punk. For real, no. A, a friend of mine, he came to my house and I didn't have a mop. And so I was on the ground and I was mopping the floor with a towel. And he says, E.T., the hip hop priest, you're on the ground and you're mopping? I said, yeah. He says, your wife got you whipped. I said, you didn't know. You just found that out. <laughs> Been doing a terrible job. I'm sorry. I am whipped. And after 23 years, you should be. And if you're not, it's a problem. So listen to me, there are those of you saying, I want to be a millionaire, I want to be the best at this company, right? But your value system says you believe in sleep more than you believe in grinding. Your value system says you are a consumer and not a producer. That you're spending more money than you're making, why? Because you're a consumer, but you're, you're reading all the books and you're saying everything the books are saying. But those books are not in alignment with your values. And if you're going to go to the next level, your values are going to have to change. Great ideas don't interrupt you, you gotta pursue them. I talked to Michael Jordan, I'll never forget, at the peak of his career, and got to watch his final game, saw him backstage and spent some time with him, and it was a pretty exciting time. He was the greatest basketball player I think that ever lived and has ever lived. And I asked him, I said, you know, what sets you apart, Michael? You know, what is it? And is it God-given talent, ability, skill, what is it? And he said, Tony, you know, he said, I can shoot you straight, and you know it's not, you know, me trying to act humble. He goes, I have a lot of talent, a lot of God-given talent, a lot of skill. I've worked really hard. But he said, really? It's my standards. He said, every day I demand more from myself than anybody else could humanly expect. I'm not competing with somebody else. I'm competing with what I'm capable of. Hmm. Magic formula. Because most of us lower our standards. Why? Because who you spend time with, my friends, is who you become. One of the biggest reasons I started going to seminars when I was like 17 is I had nobody around me as a great role model. I could read about somebody, but being around people, being in that environment was very different. Finding a way to go to work with someone who lived that standard of life was very different. You get around people with low standards and you compete with it, 
you don't need to compete with it. It's like, okay. I mean, remember Jerry Springer? I don't know if he's still in the air, but you know, I remember he used to get people on the show and I thought, where would he find these people? <laughs> and why would people watch? I'll tell you why they watch. They watch these people and go, my life's still pretty darn good compared to that person. Look at them. You don't have to change your life. All you have to do is find somebody with a lower standard and you'll feel good about yourself. But if you feel that good feeling, it's an illusion. The only thing that's gonna make you happy, my friend, and this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power of pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. I, I remember at a period in my life I was going to work and I was working on a job that I hated and at the same time I was praying that I wouldn't get fired. I was praying that I wasn't laid off. I was miserable. Nobody was holding a gun to my head. But I showed up every day and I used a flimsy excuse. Well, I got to pay the bills. I've got a car payment I have to pay. I have a family, I have children, I have a, a car note, and I have a mortgage note I have to pay. I've got to survive. I was showing up for a paycheck. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not living. And a friend of mine said, you know when people change? And I said, no. He said, when they get to the point when they say, I've had it. I've had it. I think the only reason that you're listening to me right now, the only reason that you're watching this webinar, that there's somewhere in your heart of hearts, if you said, as you looked at your life, you said, I've had it. And not only have you said, I've had it, but you said also in your heart of hearts, I can do better than this. And let me share something with you. You can. Because if anybody told me, and I'm, not, I'm going to share some things with you that I've done, not for the purpose to impress you, but to impress upon you what the possibilities are when you work on your mind and have mindset development. Because I've found that how people live their lives is a result of their state of mind. It has been said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. So part of the process, number one, is expose yourself to positive messages. And I say to you, there's more in you right now than's represented in your bank account. There's more in you right now that's being reflected by your life right now. Your life is not a true reflection of your potential. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. There's a reason that my favorite book says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And as he continues to think, so he remains. In order for us to begin to break into that level of greatness that we have within ourselves, you have to make a conscious choice every day to expose your mind to positive messages. So I put myself on a regimen. I do this every day and I suggest that you do it. Write this down. Number one, listen to motivational messages every day. If you have choosing your future, a set of tapes, the CDs that we produce, or creating your greatest life, I guarantee you, if you do what I'm sharing with you right now, for six straight months, every day your life will never be the same again. I guarantee it 100%. You listen every day for one hour to creating your greatest life, any of those messages, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. What it will begin to do is interrupt the story in your mind. It will override the story that you believe about yourself. It will distract all the negative thoughts that you have that's holding you back, that held me back for 14 years. When I used to go see the number one motivational speaker on the planet, Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins, and, and my heart said, I can do that. I love to help people. I'm just like my mother. And then my mind would ask how. And I went from my heart to my mind. And my mind would say, Les Brown, you don't have a college education. Les Brown, you've never worked for a major corporation. Les Brown, you were labeled educable mental retarded. They call you DT, the dumb twin. You're not as smart as your brother. Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and you convinced yourself that you couldn't do it? See, sometimes we need to have some external voices. And so by listening to motivational messages, that began to override the negative thoughts that I had about myself in my mind. And it gave me a new story and empowered me and gave me a vision of myself beyond my circumstances and mental conditioning and started me to writing a new chapter in my life. And so now, money will never be another issue for me. And that was an issue for most of my life because I didn't know what I didn't know and I thought I knew. So one you have to do is that you have to have a mindset development strategy where you are deliberately taking an hour every day listening to a motivational message. Every day, here's something else. Read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. Why? And read it with conviction and, and stay focused. 10 to 15 pages every day. This is seven days a week, absolutely, absolutely.